Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to a video that was really exhausting to make, at least to get one data sheet and it took me over six hours to test it with three friends of mine which are or who are Rogrepira, Pixie and also Exe and they were targets for me when I tested some rounds or the most high tier rounds against the most recent addition to the game in terms of composite armor. Now to fully understand what I did there, let me talk you through. Um, I wanted to test the effectiveness of the composite armor on the M1 Abrams, the T64B and also the Challenger 1. I did not, I did not shoot uh, at the, for example, lower glazes of the Challenger and also the driver's hatch were of no business as well as for example the shot trap or the gun mantle area and the same goes for the M1 Abrams and uh, also the T64B. Now to really talk about the armor for every tank in every single detail I will make a tank review but the first step was to understand how the armor actually works and the first important message here is that we cannot trust the values that the X-ray give us. We cannot trust the values that the stat cards for the shells give us and what they imply in terms of normalization and how it works. We actually had to do multiple, multiple custom battles where we just shot the tanks multiple times with the shell, with the same shell type at the same spot and just counted how often it penetrated or it didn't penetrate. So this is just a rough overlook but just to give you an example, the M1 Abrams, if you look at the armor, we cannot see it that behind this um, uh, armor plate, which looks actually weak, there is another composite armor. And for example, if we go further away, it just gives us two values in terms of how effective the composite armor is. And um, 380 millimeters of kinetic energy ammunition and also 600 millimeters against chemical energy ammunition. That would imply that with for example the ATGM on the T64B and or the heat FS shell on the Leopard 2K I could be able to penetrate it because both of the um, named shell types or ATGMs have 650 millimeters of penetration and in the test shooting I found out at a combat distance of 300 meters on Poland, the open field, where we uh, were um, flat, no angling involved and such, I couldn't go through. And also I tested all the AP FSDS rounds um, at 300 meters. And again, it depends on how the normalization works, the hidden factors and uh, the hidden modifiers on top of what is there already visible in the stat card. We simply cannot trust it. And this is why I did the test shooting. Now, I think that often is asked, what is normalization? What the hell are you talking about? And for that, I will have to look at the T62 because it's a very prominent and easy to understand um, example. <clears throat> Sorry about this. So if you look at the armor, there is no composite armor behind that, X-ray and so forth, just a fuel tank. But back to the armor, we have here um, rolled homogeneous armor at a thickness of 100 millimeters, but it sloped backwards at 60 degrees. And this is a very good angle to calculate with because it doubles the effective thickness. We're looking here at 199 millimeters. If you look at the tank, from this angle, so flat out at the same height. And um, tanks such as the mouse are taller and are shooting down uh, at close quarters, so neglecting uh, the uh, angling and then you have around about 55 degrees of uh, angling. But even at longer distance, um, it depends which shell type you use and which normalization the shells have. So for example, if I shoot this tank with a heat shell which has neutral normalization that means it always follows exactly line of sight and this heat shell has 190 millimeters of penetration it will not go through because at um, 60 degrees angle of attack it has less than 100 millimeters of thickness um, in terms of um, 
penetration power when it comes to the sheer thickness that it can go through. If I have 210 millimeters of penetration with a heat shell, I'll be able to go through that. Now if the tank angles, the effectiveness again rises and we can see at this angle it's 270, 330 millimeters of effective thickness. And then comes the out of bounds chances in and so forth. So what is then their uh, normalization? Well, for example, if the shell uh, ricochets while impacting, then we are talking about, or if it ricochets inside of the armor um, of the impact and so forth, especially APHE shells, AP shots, APCR and so forth, they do not do very well against heavily sloped armor. For example, the long 88, in theory has 235 millimeters of penetration against flat armor. I can guarantee you it will not go through the frontal armor of a T62 uh, on flat ground, even at point blank range. The mouse with the 128 millimeter gun actually can mostly go through, but just barely. And that has a penetration value of 268 with the upgraded APHG shot, if I'm not mistaken. And that has to do also with the caliber and so forth. But at higher tiers, we're talking about um, AP FSDS and or heat exclusively in most cases, I guess. And um, about AP FSDS, there are basically two things. There is AP FSDS that um, has performance against heavily sloped armor like AP shots of equivalent penetration power um, to a certain degree and also then AP FSDS rounds with positive normalization. That means they dig themselves into the armor so they don't see like 203 millimeters but they would just see around about 160 millimeters from their perspective. And how to understand it, it's too difficult and we also cannot trust the X-ray, we cannot trust the penetration values, we cannot trust anything but our own test shooting and just under the circumstances that we've given it. And for example, for a tank like, um, where is it? Yeah, there it is, the T-64B. Um, I also did it like this. I just uh, shot at the part with the uh, composite armor. So for example, a turret front and also the um, hull front, but not the parts where there is no uh, composition. Uh, for example, the lower glazes and the driver's hatch and also the gun mantle area or the, the cupolas. Those little details are reserved for the tank reviews on those tanks so that we can see that they have a wide uh, area of protection. And um, I tested it by shooting here and also here. And for a tank such as the M1 Abrams, the turret faces are different. So I tested it differently for the M1 Abrams and same goes for the Challenger. So we'll see how it goes. And um, again, I didn't uh, go for ricochets or shot traps or the penetrations through the driver's port or again cupolas. I was just interested in how the uh, uh, composite armor holds against AP FSDS rounds. And I found out some surprising amounts of balance, but also strangeness in my test shooting. Let's have a look at the results. And from now on, it's getting very dry and you basically see just one picture. So this is not an action-packed fun gameplay that I present you, if you are not aware of this by this now. It's very, very much a lot of theory crafting. And this is the picture that I worked for quite some while. And um, as you can see, I um, the color scheme is from the perspective of the armor of the tank that I shot, which is on top. And then I also named the tanks and their shell types. And if it's a stock shell, which shell type it is, the shell designation, and also which tier of upgrade it is. And we can see the M1 Abrams actually has a lot of trouble penetrating itself with any sort of uh, shell type. And um, for example, the stock ammunition is the same ammo type as for example on the M60 A1 Rise P 
and the same goes for the Type 74 with the upgraded APFSDS rounds. Just the APFSDS rounds on the Leopard A1A1 and also the MX30 B2 Brenners had very different stats, so they were um, interesting enough to test. However, they were also not really that convincing. And we can see that the M1 Abrams again has also a lot of trouble dealing with the Challenger um, and also the T64B. Whereas when we look at the Leopard 2K, it mostly can switch between the stock heat of S round and the APF SDS round and most of the time is able to deal with the majority of enemies. In particular, it's very interesting that um, the heat of S round has problems with dealing with the M1 Abrams reliable, but the uh, um, APF SDS round has much better chances of dealing with it reliable, especially with the lower glazes. And when we then look to the Challenger, it's more or less the same, but it's completely the other way around with the T64B. Now, I didn't test the Leopard 2K here with the armor because the hitting areas are so huge and the composite armor is just spaced armor, uh, which is a very, in comparison, tiny target on, uh, under the gun mantle or within the gun mantle on the lower side that I didn't think it's worth uh, my time by testing it especially against uh, very strong ATGMs, heat defense and AP FSDS rounds, a little bit of spaced armor. I'm not quite sure how effective it is. Again, for the tank review, I will test it. Now let's have a look at the T64B. And we can see that the stock AP FSDS round is pretty, pretty strong. And especially against the M1 Abrams, we can see that it punches through quite a bit just at the right turret side, so on the other side where the gunner sits, it has difficulties penetrating. But again, if you have such good penetration values against the uh, uh, left turret side and the lower glazes, why bother shooting there? The same goes for the Challenger, although the left turret side is pretty strong, like the um, other side of the turret. And um, yeah, the uh, actual composite armor on the hull is not really strong against the stock round. Then the ATGM has a lot of trouble dealing with anything. Just on the Challenger hull it can somewhat penetrate 2 out of 10 shots, but I still consider that safe. Now again, this is not um, talking here about the lower glazes and the turret ring and also the driver's hatch which are huge weak spots and easy to penetrate in contrast. So then we when talk when we talk now about the upgraded shell on the T64B, it's a bit strange because we still can very reliable penetrate now the M1 Abrams, and you think to yourself, well, that's not much of a surprise. But then when we talk about the Challenger, uh, suddenly it has more or less the same values than the stock shell. And that is a bit surprising because I thought it would punch much more through it, but the Challenger holds up when it comes to 300 meters distance at clean shots at the composite armor. At least the parts where I shot, where I think the composite armor is the strongest. And just a few centimeters, um, again, I have to remind you again about this, a few centimeters from those spots, the armor is then different and we have less... Um, armor plating, less steel plating on top of it, or we just have the gun mantle area or a shot trap, driver's edge and whatnot. Now, one final thing that I have to say in general about the test shooting, I was actually pretty shocked. I was literally shocked how inaccurate some of the tier four upgraded shells are. So AP FSDS can be extremely inaccurate, especially the uh, accuracy differences between the stock AP FSDS round, the M735 and the tier four upgrade, the M774 AP FSDS rounds. The accuracy difference on one tank, namely the M1 Abrams, was enormous. And the same goes for the T64B, you might think, but that's not true, because the T64B has such a high muscle velocity and such pinpoint accuracy that you don't have that high of a dispersion. On the M1 Abrams, we, on some shots, at a distance of 300 meters, we had a difference of, lo and behold, half a meter uh, on, on some extreme rounds that went wide. 
So this is almost wall of tanks accuracy and I was really really shocked when it came to this. Now one final thing about the uh, challenger is that um, the uh, stock round the L15A5 already was able to penetrate the lower glaciers on the M1 Abrams and the first upgraded shell was not really that much stronger when it came to dealing with the tired front of the M1 Abrams. Just 3 out of 10 and 2 out of 10 against the um, left and the right side of the turret. And it also could penetrate the lower glaciers. So if you see it the other way around, the weakest area on the M1 Abrams is the central lower gla uh, glaciers. And um, again, I did not uh, count the ricochets from the um, heavily sloped upper frontal glaciers, which led to a lot of... Um, gun breach, um, damaging shots, or just um, driver's hedge penetrations and so forth. So those were just the ideal shots. Now you see some gaps here with the MX-30 B2 Brenners, I didn't bother to shoot at the M1 Abrams, and also with the Challenger, I didn't shoot at the Challenger, and the T-64B, I didn't shoot the T-64B. Um, this might be interesting for Arcade, but it was just too much time requiring for just this one little data sheet. And so you can, of course, stop the video, make your notes, let me know if you have some different experiences. Please keep in mind, this doesn't include any sort of angling, any sort of further or shorter combat distances like point blank range. And um, yeah, those were multiple shots. So in simple um, one shot examples, your experience might differ. This was just a heads up video and I learned a lot from the six hours of test shooting. I will happily include that into the tank reviews that will come up hopefully this week if I have enough time and if I get enough gameplay and if no further changes will happen soon. And um, yeah, that's it for me today. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, share this video with your friends. If they have some questions, um, then also give it a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies, on the battlefields and on the shooting ranges of War Thunder.